Hi everyone, welcome to Baking Lemonade. I'm your host, Noah Rodriguez Hoffman. In 2011, Kara Armstrong found herself up at 3 a.m. holding her screaming newborn in one arm while struggling to mix baby formula and heat up the bottle with the other arm. Feeling exhausted and overwhelmed, she looked over at her coffee machine and that's when it hit her. Why wasn't the process of mixing baby formula and heating it up automated? just like her cup of coffee. Kara, an ER nurse by trade, rolled up her sleeves and got to work to develop the baby barista and make life easier for formula feeding parents everywhere. Hi Kara, thank you so much for being on the show today. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about you, your backstory and how baby barista was born, no pun intended. <laughs> Hi, Noah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm fantastic. I'm so happy to be here. Baby Barista was born out of the, the old adage that necessity is the mother of invention. I have a daughter. My third daughter, Mia, was born with Down syndrome and she was unable to breastfeed. And I said, I'm just going to use my time on maternity leave to invent a machine that makes the perfect bottle. Of course, that was incredibly naive. I didn't realize what I was facing or what the timeline was going to be but I became very passionate about solving the age-old problem of bottle preparation. Without any previous experience in building a product from scratch, how did you know where to get started? Well, I, I really didn't know where to start. My husband had a client that was a very successful entrepreneur. He jumped in and he the first step was helping me get my idea out of my head by applying for a patent. The patent was granted in 2014. Things kind of came to a halt for a little while, right? Uh, what made things jump back up? I was working in a busy emergency room. I had three kids and a husband in graduate school. And so there was a lot on my plate. I kept making phone calls to that same individual and saying, you know, can you help me yet? Can we raise the money to do this? I think this is a great idea. He was really a busy and successful man. And I saw a product on Amazon. It was a, a different embodiment of the, the same idea that I had. I thought that was the end of my dream, but it actually wasn't. This is a great thing that that product exists because it's essentially proof of concept. We had started with a superior idea, but now we could really dissect that idea and respond to the the concerns that came up about the product that was already on the shelf. And there were concerns. I knew that if any formula got inside the working componentry of the machine, that we'd have contamination issues. So I fought to design a machine that would mix the formula and water in a separate chamber and that that chamber would be the only piece that needs to be cleaned. That differentiates us from our competitor that requires the consumer to disassemble and hand wash at least 10 components, plastic components, reassemble the machine after every fourth use, which in the early days of a baby's life can be three times a day. That just <laughs> yeah, really... the mom has plenty of jobs, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Does that, that just negates the convenience that a machine offers. That prompted my original investor to actually help me raise my first friends and family round of funding. We built a beautiful look-alike, functional-like prototype. Now you have the investor on your side, but then life happens again. And you were dealt a devastating tragedy with your mom and dad passing away. What made you keep going after that? My mother was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer, and she was caregiving for my dad, who had somewhat advanced dementia at that point. I had the opportunity to jump in and be a, sort of the private duty nurse for my mom and dad until they passed away, which was the privilege of a lifetime, but it did slow down my timeline. I went back to my original investor and said, is there a pathway for me to take full ownership of this project? He said, yes, and, and this is the amount that I would need for you to take over a controlling stake in the company. Um, it seemed like an unreasonable amount of money that I could never raise or, or access myself. I called human resources and I asked how much I had saved in my 401k over the course of being a nurse for 12 years. And when I found out that the numbers were just a couple thousand dollars off, I took control of the company in 2018. CEOs are often required to make hard decisions and to make them quickly, kind of like an ER nurse. What transferable skills did you realize that you had that would be, help you become a successful CEO? I never ever in the emergency room saved a life by myself. It, it just doesn't happen. It takes a team. And the same thing with the company. You don't run a company in isolation. And I credit the majority of my success to the incredible team that I have and the people that I've surrounded myself with. As a nurse, it's really important to know 
when to let the doctor know that the, the treatment plan is not working. Well, the same thing in business. When something isn't working, you have to have the ability to judge when to pivot and why and know why you're pivoting. Where are you in terms of being ready to deploy and where will people be able to find Baby Barista? We have a hardware component, we have an app, and then we have the formula piece. And Baby Barista was never going to scale without a formula partner that I could really trust and believe in. And the CEO and I have very similar founding stories. We both uh, set out to improve the lives of our children. We're partnering with an organization called Hearts of Joy International that provides life-saving heart surgery to children in five countries. You know, babies sometimes can't have surgery until they are at a certain weight. So our goal would be to uh, send preoperative nutrition to these babies that are awaiting life-saving heart surgery to support families that are economically disadvantaged and can't provide that kind of nutrition. That's amazing. What lessons can you share for first-time entrepreneurs? You have to persevere and you have to be able to take transferable skills from your prior career that maybe you thought had nothing to do with being an entrepreneur or CEO and kind of figure out what were the lessons that I learned and how can I apply those to my new endeavor. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. I wish you good luck in your continued success and I'm sure I'll be a customer one day. <laughs> I hope you will. Thank you so much, Kara, again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That's our show for today. New episodes of Making Lemonade drop every Thursday, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. I'm your host, Noah Rodriguez-Hoffman. A million thanks for watching.